Hello, this is Mercury 11 In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, different kinds of metals so you can easily cast. But I'm mainly going to focus on how to identify um, aluminum and zinc and tell the difference between them so you can separate them, as well as magnesium because that's very um, important not to mix that in with your magnesium and zinc. So um, I guess I'll start with the other metals. So you can see steel here. Well, obviously, um, steel is easily um, attracted by a magnet, so and the temperature is just way too high for a home foundry to melt it in. Copper is very easy to find in wire and copper pipe and stuff like that, but as you can see, it's still awfully high for the home foundry. It can be melted, but you really need a proper crucible for this, because if you try to use a steel crucible, um, it's just going to eat right through it just because of that high temperature. Same goes for brass. Brass is commonly found in pipe fittings and bushings and stuff like that. Um, but it also is almost in the 1000 degrees Celsius range and it will eat right through your crucible. So you need a proper cremic or uh, graphite crucible to melt that. Um, silver has still a very relatively high melting temperature. Um, this is some silver sheet that I found in a cell phone, a really old one. And here's some uh, lead-free solder, pipe solder, and this stuff is actually really good quality casting material um, if you're going to cast like little, um, I, don't, I don't know, figurines and stuff like that because it actually has a really low melting temperature because it's um, alloyed with tin, I believe. So this has probably four or five hundred degrees Celsius melting temperature so you can easily melt that on, on your stove. Lead is another um, easily castable one just because of its really low melting temperature but it's fairly poisonous and you can find it in bullets and um, this is probably pipe lead. Here's some sheeting or um, shielding from a, a Geiger counter, some solder, uh, different weights, fishing weights and stuff like that are all lead. Um, but since it's somewhat poisonous you don't want to be machining or drilling this um, and it's really easy to identify because it's very heavy and very soft. Um, zinc is Probably a little bit less common than aluminum. I'd say aluminum is certainly most common because probably because it's very light, cheap, and um, although zinc is n generally cheaper, but aluminum is lighter and it's more corrosion resistant. So um, zinc is a bit heavier than aluminum. It has a fairly low temperature of melt, much lower than aluminum. Aluminum is 600 degrees. Um, zinc is 400. Um, but zinc is generally used in places where you're going to um, want to uh, coat it with something. So plating, such as pennies or zinc, the ones made after 1982 are zinc. Um, things like bathroom fixtures, towel holder racks, this faucet, that's all zinc. But it's coated with um, chrome to make it nice shiny surface. And zinc is often used in places where it's called um, no machining or something like that, um, where basically it's injected molding, molded, and because it doesn't um, contract very much when it's um, casted, it uh, you don't really need to machine it because you can cast it with really high precision. So like these parts from this lock are zinc, and there's no machining whatsoever, and they fit together perfectly. Um, things like toys, like this gun, and this was played with something, this is got a fair bit of heft to it actually and where the paints come off or the plating you can see it's a very dull color um, things like matchbox cars is your zinc screen door handle um, here's some that I melted down gearboxes are sometimes zinc and bushings and sometimes gears these are actually steel gears um, but zinc can be used as gears and stuff like that because it actually has some um, lubricating properties so this is actually a really old um, windshield wiper motor, air powered from a really old car, um, and that's zinc. So, aluminum, I'd say it's one of the most common um, metals you're going to find, and it's fairly low melting temperature, so you can easily melt this in a home foundry. Um, zinc, you can just melt with a blowtorch, just put a blowtorch to it, even on the stove, you can melt it easily. Aluminum is a little bit higher temperature, you have to, um, steel crucible is acceptable. To melt it in uh, zinc, you can certainly melt in a steel crucible. Um, so you're gonna find aluminum in drink cans. While it works well to use um, aluminum from drink cans as um, to cast with, it's not the best quality. You also have to put like 
I don't know, for a pound you need like 50 cans at least, so you're going to be sitting there just feeding these things in forever, um, and you're going to get a lot of um, plastic and just dross and stuff that you're going to have to skim off. So aluminum cans are good because they're cheap, or really free rather. Um, another good place is just taking things apart and getting like hard drive. Um, this has got a lot of aluminum in it. The hard drive frame has a lot of aluminum. I like those a lot because it's... You especially if you're going to cast stuff, you especially want to find stuff that's already been casted because it already will have some flux and stuff like that and it. it's just the right alloy for casting. So I would recommend finding things that are already casted such as these. These were from projection TVs that holds the lens and stuff like that. Um, here's uh, another piece of aluminum. This is actually very machined. Um, heat sinks are good. They're actually extruded, so I mean they'll still work fine. There's some more uh, casted engine components, such as this weed whacker engine. This is aluminum. Um, this is a part from a pillar, like a front porch pillar. Decorative thing. Aluminum foil. Not very much aluminum though. Some more casted parts. Satellite dish piece. But um, so. And then we have magnesium. You do not want to mix magnesium in with your other um, elements or your other castings because it will um, basically catch fire and you'll just have a metal fire. And that's really dangerous because once metal will start burning, it's really hard to put it out. The, really only the way to put it out is to suffocate it with sand or something like that. Because if you pour water on a metal fire, because it's so hot, it'll break the... Um, and it wants to react so bad, it will just steal the oxygen out of the water and just keep on burning and you can't put it out and it'll create hydrogen and you'll just have a big problem. So magnesium, once you get it to melt, it just pretty much ignites and you have a bright white flame that's really hot. So magnesium, it's not real common, but it's really light um, and you'll find it often in uh, computer frames and things that need to be really light but fairly strong. So cell phone um, frames, uh, hard, or not hard drive, um, computer frames, things like that. Laptops will often have magnesium frames in them. Um, so you got to watch out for magnesium. Lucky for us though, um, magnesium is extremely easy to tell apart from aluminum and zinc. All you need is vinegar, just normal old vinegar from your kitchen. Just take that, put a drip on there, and after a couple of seconds, it'll start fizzing, and that's how you know it is magnesium, because it just really easily reacts with the vinegar and many other acids as well. But if you have a powerful enough acid, it'll eat aluminum as well and zinc. But you can see it's fizzing quite rapidly. And I believe that's actually hydrogen gas bubbling off there. So you could probably light that. But I don't think I would, because that probably wouldn't be a smart idea, since the magnesium could light too. <laughs> Probably you'd have to eat it pretty hot. So that's easy to tell magnesium apart. Um, aluminum and zinc are a little bit harder to um, tell apart, but honestly, you don't really have to tell them apart unless you want a really high quality aluminum or zinc casting. You can just mix them together, throw it together, because there's actually an alloy that's zinc aluminum alloy that is designed for. Um, gravity casting, which is what you'll most likely be doing just like this. Um, and it's actually supposed to be as strong as cast iron. So, I don't know, just an interesting bit I found on the internet. So, one, the, probably the easiest and fastest way to, um, but it's not always fail-safe um, method to tell them apart, is to just go by weight. So just pick up a piece of um, your aluminum, or what you think is aluminum, and it's fairly light for the amount of area there is. Um, zinc is pretty heavy. It's a fair bit heavier than um, uh, than aluminum. So, I mean, these pieces are similar size, and that's definitely, definitely heavier than this piece here. So, that's the that's one way to tell. Um, the second way, or another way that I've seen people do it is with um, different kinds of acid. If you put um, an acid on aluminum and on zinc, the zinc will, is supposed to turn black and the magnesium, or the aluminum is not supposed to turn black, it's not supposed to do anything. But I had both of them turn black, so I don't know. The easiest way I found, though, is to just take a file and file the um, aluminum, or what you think is aluminum. So file a spot on it, and then you just look at the color of them. So, let's see, I'll, I'll do this, because I know this is zinc.
And then if you just look at the color or how shiny they are. So aluminum is much duller. Mag or zinc is much shinier. It's almost got a mirror finish on there. Here's another one piece. It's like a mirror finish, but um where did I here's one. But this is very dull, almost a grey. This is a very shiny color. I think I yeah, here's another. And that's probably due to just the how much softer um aluminum is than zinc is a bit harder and more brittle, I'd say. Here's another spot. It's very gray colored. This is very shiny. So that's the easiest way I found to tell them apart. Um, so yeah. And usually you're not going to find things like this faucet that are aluminum because it's harder to um, get a good uh, electroplating surface on it like this. So I hope this video helped you in identifying different kinds of metals. If you want, just throw them together. It's not really going to matter. Um, so if you're unsure about something being aluminum or zinc, throw it together. You have a zinc aluminum alloy, which is going to be even stronger. Maybe not quite as light, but and plus it'll probably melt at maybe more like 500 degrees Celsius instead of 600. So yeah, I hope this video helped you guys out in identifying metals. Um, that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching.